This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're now going to go through and introduce your weighted average cost of capital calculations. Uh, it's a key component of that 15% within the syllabus that's all about your sources of long-term finance. So we've spoken about debt finance, we've spoken about equity finance in the previous lectures. Now we need to work out a weighted return that we need to give to those finance holders. So let's have a look at what it's all about. Okay, and grab yourselves a separate page of paper uh, and you can take it down as we go along. Or if not, just be eyes and ears and, and see that you understand it. Because what you've got is a box. That box is your company and you're in charge of that box. You can call your company what, whatever it so needs to be called. Okay, uh, I'll just keep it simple. I'm going to call it ABC PLC. Uh, that company needs to increase the wealth of the shareholders, isn't it? That's the, the fundamental corporate objective, increasing the wealth of the shareholders. And to do that, we need to invest in projects. If we invest in projects, we need finance to fund that project. That finance is going to come from your equity holders. It will also come from your preference shareholders and it will also come from your debt holders. Now, if somebody has invested within your business via equity, they will require a return, won't they? They will require a return based upon capital growth of the shares and also dividend income. That return that they require is a cost to the business, isn't it, to provide that return. And that cost is referred to as the cost of equity. Similarly, for your preference shareholders, if they've invested within the business, they too will require a return. And that return will be in the form of annual constant dividends. That return, paying that dividend every single year, is a cost to the company. So that is referred to as the cost of preference shares. We also go through as well and look at the debt holders. The debt holders will require an interest payment to be made to them every single year. In some situations, the debt will also need to be redeemed as well. So they will require a return for the interest and also a return on maybe the growth uh, on that debt instrument. The return is a cost to the company and that cost we refer to as the cost of debt KD. When we're appraising that project, having raised the finance for it, we need to ensure that it generates a positive NPV, doesn't it? because that will then ensure that we have paid back the debt holders, paid back the preference shareholders and also the equity holders. However, when we're appraising a project, we use the NPV technique, which takes our cash flows and multiplies it by a discount factor. And to work out the discount factor, we need an appropriate discount rate. To work out an appropriate discount rate that ensures that we give the appropriate return, to the debt holders, the preference shareholders and the equity holders, what we could simply do is we could take the three costs of equity, preps and debt, add them together and work out a simple average by dividing by three. However, what would be a better way to look at it would be to perform a weighted average of those figures based upon the market values of the equity, the preps and the debt. Because if our company is financed more via equity as opposed to preps or debt, then we would want to try and skew that average cost more towards the higher risk cost of equity. Okay, So what we're going to go through and do is work out a weighted average cost of capital, weighted based upon market values, and that weighted average cost of capital is referred to as your WAC. Okay. There we go. That's that's what we're doing. We're working out a return for each of the equity, preps and debt holders. And then we're going to weight it based upon the market values. So when we're performing the full weighted average cost of capital calculation, uh, what you would need is a four column approach. You need to look at the different forms of finance. You need to look at the cost, so the cost to the company of providing the equity, the preps and the debt holders with their return. You also need to work out the market value and then we need to do that weighting calculation by taking the cost and multiplying it by the market value. So in the finance column, you would look at your forms of finance, equity, preps and debt. In the cost column, 
you would work out the cost of equity, the cost of press and the cost of debt. So KE, KP and KD. You would then work out the market values. So the market value of equity, the market value of your press and the market value of your debt. You would then multiply across the cost multiplied by the market value for each of the equity press and the debt. Once you've done that, we can then total up the columns, uh, the total of the cost multiplied by the market value on the right. And then in the middle, you have the total market value. We then need to work out the weighted average cost of capital. Remember, we're weighting it based upon the market value. So you take your cost multiplied by the market value, the sum of those on the top of the fraction, and then you divide it by the total market value. That then gives you your weighted average cost of capital, and that weighted average cost of capital can then be used as your discount rate in project appraisal, knowing that it gives a return to each of the debt preference and equity holders.